Okay, what we're going to cover today is something that's asked all the time, especially in the SPC communities, uh, Raspberry Pi, BeagleBoard, uh, Verisite, uh, uh, even the PIC. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, we, uh, and of course the Arduino, um, we have a PIC chip here, uh, so it's interesting that we're talking about it. Uh, PIC 16 uh, series chips uh, all run at uh, TTL 5 volts plus. You have to understand that most of the new stuff runs at 3.3 volts. Okay, so if you're pulling off, uh, let's say, the GPIO pins off of your Beagle board or something like that, guess what? You need two tools. Okay, and let me show you some schematics here of the two tools that you'll need. Okay, one of them is called a voltage divider network. Okay, now this is the simple, uh, the simpler one of the two tools that you need. Okay, what this does is it allows you to step a voltage down from let's say 5 volts down to whatever voltage you need. Okay, now for the purposes of this example, uh, we're making uh, these resistor values equal and when you do that it divides it in two okay now to get 3.3 volts you could calculate it okay but what I do every time is I go to an online converter uh, I do a Google search on online converter voltage divider okay and what you do is you uh, type in what your voltage is and which voltage you want it to be and then it will give you the R1 and the R2 values okay um, I could talk a little bit about the equations but the online converters are so good that you might as well just jump on the internet and uh, get the calculator to to calculate R1 and R2 for you okay this allows you to step uh, a signal from a higher voltage down to the lower voltage that you need okay in most cases it's 3.3 volts okay so a lot of times you, get, you have to go from TTL the old 5 volt style down to 3.3 to do that you just use this network right here it's only made up of two resistors but you have to get your R1 and your R2 right in order to get the right output voltage okay now to go uphill okay um, you can't pass a signal back uh, you would be expecting your resistors to act kind of like batteries okay which they don't do okay so what you need is you need a way to get it uphill okay so from 3.3 volts up to let's say 5 volts okay to do that we have something called an opto isolator okay now an opto isolator is very easy to understand it's an LED that's butted up against something called a phototransistor now a phototransistor is interesting because as you notice it doesn't have a gate pin what it has instead is a little solar cell on it that becomes the gate okay that's why it's a phototransistor interestingly enough there are a lot of similarities between transistors internally and um, solar cells okay and opto isolators capitalize on this uh, similarity between transistors and solar cells such that if you put a light source directly up against um, the surface of the phototransistor and it is inside of the opto oscillator uh, opto isolator sorry that you can actually get isolation electrical isolation <laughs> that as long as you turn this on it will throw this switch okay now this is exactly like a switch except for one thing it only has one direction okay current can only go this way 
and the way that it goes is indicated by the arrow okay so our opto isolator is this component right here okay which is made up of an LED butted up against a phototransistor okay now you don't have to remember that because they come as little chips like this okay it has uh, the LED on one side and the phototransistor on the other but do check the data sheet okay one of the problems I had with these little push buttons is I thought that that the switching action went across this way it's actually this way <laughs> okay same thing with opto isolators you know I'd love to say that the LED is on this side and the phototransistor is on this side for the life of me I can't remember okay so consult the data sheet okay but this is the schematic what we do is we have on this side because we're trying to push it uphill is on this side the battery would be equivalent to 3.3 volts okay and we're trying to push it up to 5 so the battery on this side would be 5 volts okay now what we have here here, sorry, is the simplest opto isolator circuit I could think of. Okay. okay. This is it plugged in. Before we take a look at the opto isolator, let's look at, at the simpler version, the voltage divider, okay, which takes us downhill. Okay? Now you'll notice that we have two resistors here. The way that they're hooked up is according to the schematic here. Okay. So since I'm pulling off of the five volt power rail here, I'm uh, I'm powering off of my uh, tablet brick here, which is uh, five volts at 500 milliamps or half an amp. Okay. Since our rails are running at five volts when we run uh, the power through this little voltage divider network you will notice that the LED lights up here okay this means that this point in voltage is 2.5 volts it divides it in half because these two resistors are of equal values okay so that's how simple it is to make a voltage divider network. If you're trying to get a 5 volt signal into a 3.3 volt domain, what you do is you feed the 5 volt signal in through here. And you tap it here in the middle of the two resistors. Okay. Now to get it from 5 volts to exactly 3.3 volts, do what I said earlier. Find out the R1 value and the R2 value, and they have to be selected such that it doesn't dissipate too much power, so make it somewhere in like the 10k ohm area, okay? It just needs enough current flowing that it works, but not so much that it actually dissipates any power, okay? We're just looking for the voltage, okay? We need the voltage divided, okay? So that's basically the end of uh, the voltage divider section, which brings signals down in voltage, okay? If, if you're running, let's say, a PIC chip, and you need to feed it to your Raspberry Pi, or your Beagle board, or whatever, what you do is use a voltage divider. And it really is that simple. It's just two resistors, feed in here, tap here or output here. Input here, output here. Okay. Now switching over to the opto isolator, we have a one channel opto isolator. It's in a dip uh, four pin package. It's this teeny tiny little chip here. Okay. Now what this chip here is, is and I'll show you this on a later video, is that this is something called a PIC microcontroller unit, okay? 
it's it's programmable. Uh, you program it in assembly language. I won't talk too much about it, but I put a program on it that blinks this LED here. Okay. Now the reason why I'm talking about it a little bit is because I needed an excitation for my opto isolator test. Okay. So if I pull this like this. This is my input, okay, to my opto isolator. If I manually plug it into my plus five volt rail like this, you'll notice that the light or the LED right next to it lights up. The reason for that isn't because I'm powering it directly, it's because the signal is actually going through the opto isolator. Okay? Now the opto isolator, of course, provides electrical isolation. Very important. But did you know that you can actually use it to increase the voltage of a signal in the particular configuration that we're using here? Okay. Let me plug it back into here, like this. And you'll notice that both of them are blinking now. This one is directly coming off of the pick. This is directly coming off of the phototransistor from the opto isolator. So this output is electrically isolated from this chip. Okay? So what we do is we have several um, discrete components here that are required okay this is the current limiter that's required so that we can use the LED in a 5 volt domain okay so it basically uh, uh, limits the current to, uh, reduces the voltage so it doesn't burn out the LED okay now, an opto isolator has an LED in it, and the particular uh, LED that's in this opto isolator has a forward voltage of, I think, about 1.3 volts. So we have to select a current limiting resistor for the internal LED in the opto isolator, and this is what this resistor is for. Okay. Now, getting back to the schematic for an opto isolator, and and the reason why I'm covering both of these at the same time is because these are the two tools that you need in order to interface GPIO signals from a 3.3 domain in and out to other voltage domains such as TTL or 5 volts and 0 volts. Okay, so what we do is we have a push button here and whenever we push it current flows like this and of course this is the uh, this is the current uh, limiting resistor that keeps this thing from burning out we're assuming that this is 5 volts okay now because we're going from a 5 volt domain to a 3.3 volt domain this battery here would be 3.3 volts, okay? This, this uh, voltage source here, this battery, will be 5 volts, okay? Now you notice that there's no wires between these two domains. The reason is, is because what's being transmitted is light in one direction, okay? That's how this circuit here controls this circuit here, is by light. Okay. This is the actual value if the if this is 5 volts. Okay? It results in an effective forward voltage of about 1.3 volts through this LED. Okay? Here we have a 3.3 volt battery. Whenever light hits the gate on the phototransistor, it allows it, it basically throws the switch and the current goes like this, it gets slowed down here so the LED won't be uh, won't be heated up 
and it goes through here and here. So whenever you push this button here, okay, this LED lights up. So this is about the simplest test circuit you can have for an opto-isolator. That's the end of our presentation. We hope you like it.